Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. Buddy Technologies was supposed to be the final standalone June quarter Penix 4C video that I was going to do. I've decided actually to do another video on Threat Protect. The main reason I decided to wait to do the video on Buddy Technologies is for some reason they're actually issuing monthly Penix 4Cs. Uh, typically we see uh, Penix 4Cs released every quarter, but the ASX uh, has asked for some reason, I don't know why, uh, for Buddy to release monthly and uh, Appendix 4Cs. And I just waited for the August Appendix 4C to be released, which was done on the 1st of October before the trading began. So I just decided to wait for that and include that in this video. So even though I will be looking at financial year 21 results and the June quarter Appendix 4C for Buddy, we'll also look at the previous two monthly Appendix 4Cs. So let's get stuck into it. And before we look at any of their results, financial results, let's look at what actually Buddy Technologies does. Buddy Technologies is an Internet of Things and cloud-based technology company. They have two core businesses, commercial business, uh, which includes Buddy Ohm and Buddy Managed Services. Buddy Ohm is a resource monitoring an analytics solution providing energy monitoring, reporting, and auditing services. And Buddy Managed Services, is, or they license the Buddy Tech for integration in their customers' products. And the second business is the consumer business, which trades under the LifeX brand and is provider of smart lighting solutions, including Wi-Fi enabled lights. If I had to choose between commercial business and the consumer business, that has me interested in Buddy Technologies, it's definitely the consumer business side uh, with LifeX. I do actually like what they are providing in regards to smart lighting solutions. And we can see how both businesses are doing, and I'll actually show you that uh, later in this video. Buddy Technologies was founded in 2006, which actually did surprise me. I thought uh, this company was not that old and actually listed in December 2006. That's also surprised me. I thought this company was a recent listing, maybe four or five years ago. The CEO is David McLaughlin. He has a 4% stake in this company. I'm not sure he's the managing director. For some reason, I have that included there. And the largest shareholder is FIL Investment Management with a 9.1% stake in this company. The market cap of Buddy Technologies is 65 million. That's at 1.9 cents. That could be fluctuating today. I am doing this video just after open on 1st of October. And I just had a look at what the market was doing. It was down 1.7%. Tick code for Buddy is obviously um, BUD. Could it be anything else? Now, looking at the financials for the financial year 21, revenue 28.8 million, which actually was down from the previous year. So that's not good that they did have decreasing revenue from the previous year. Uh, highly unprofitable, a negative 6.8 in profit, and operating cash flow negative by $21 million. That is a big issue when it comes to Buddy Technologies. They also have a fair bit of debt, 29.2 million, but that is falling. They've just done a capital raising. I think that was done in July, and one of the reasons they did a capital raising was to de decrease the debt. And you can see the interest paid for the financial year on that debt was $7.4 billion. And you just see that sometimes that can be an issue for companies like Buddy Technologies. Even though we are in a low interest rate environment, the interest rates that Buddy is paying on some of the loans is higher than 10%. In fact, I think it could be 12.5%, um, maybe even one's 15%. Enterprise value is 94 million. Shares on issue after the latest cap raising is 3.7 billion. Eight years ago, in 2013, shares on issue were 79 million. So Buddy Technologies have been doing numerous cap raisings over the past eight years. And one of the reasons behind that is because this company has been burning cash like there's nothing else. You just see that in the previous financial year. Uh, in operations, they lost $21 million. And that's why they have to continually raise capital, increasing their shares on issue, diluting current shareholders. And that's a massive red flag when it comes to Buddy Technologies. Which business is the best the performing business for Buddy Technologies, the commercial business or the consumer business? And they do break this down in their either their annual report or one of those uh, financial year 21 reports they did release. 
commercial business revenue only seven hundred thousand dollars, while the consumer business twenty eight million. Just see that the consumer business selling these LifeX lights is doing fairly good in terms of revenue, but still highly uh, unprofitable and losing cash as well. I think commercial business uh, revenue fell by almost fifty percent from the previous year. So if I did have to pick one of the business to for Buddy to um, perform well over the next five years, it will definitely be their life X. Maybe they will decide to concentrate on that side of the business and maybe sell their commercial business, particularly because they are losing a fair bit of cash uh, in both businesses. I think eventually management of this company will have to make some hard decisions moving forward unless they rein in some of their costs. So a lot of questions for management, but these are the reasons why they get paid the big bucks. People like me aren't getting paid the big bucks. We can uh, hypothesize what they might do, but eventually it's the management have to make the hard decisions in the future. And I think eventually they might have to do this because even though they did raise capital in July, uh, I think half of it was for working capital, half of it was paid back debt. Just looking at the most recent appendix for C for the month of August, uh, they are already seeing the cash uh, come down to about $2 million and they were burning a little bit of cash in the August month. But we'll have a look at that when we look at the monthly Appendix 4C coming up in a few slides. First of all, though, we'll look at the two quarterly Appendix 4Cs, the March quarter and then the June quarter. The March quarter did not look very good. Receipts to customers $4.1 million. They spent over $10 million on product manufacturing and operating costs, $2.6 million on staff costs, and interest for the quarter, $5 million. You can see the effect of debt, $5 million of interest in one quarter. That meant... Overall, uh, Buddy Technologies uh, was operational cash flow negative by $15.5 million. They began the quarter with $7.2 million of cash and finished the quarter with $1.6 million. And you can understand why they need to raise some capital. They also borrowed $10 million. And by the end of the quarter, the total loans they had were $23.6 million. Things did improve for Buddy in the June quarter. Receipts from customers did increase by $4.8 million to $8.9 million. And product manufacturing and operating costs fell by $6.3 million to $3.8. Staff costs were still high at $2.3 million. Uh, but overall, they're actually operational cash flow positive for this quarter by $534,000. did surprise me personally. I did not expect to do a video on Buddy Technologies because they historically... There had been operational cash flow negative in a quarter. One of the reasons potentially why product manufacturing and operating costs came down, they did mention in commentary for this quarter that on the 27th of April, the company announced the suspension of manufacturing scheduling as a company's allotment of a critical semiconductor component has been sold by the component supply to third party. So maybe one of the reasons why uh, product manufacturing was down because they actually did suspend manufacturing. That's just me, again, hypothesizing. Potentially, they had a higher supply and not, not as much demand, so they didn't need as much product manufacturing. That could be also a possibility. If you do have reasons uh, or more insights than I have on why product manufacturing fell by a fair bit in this June quarter, leave it in the comment section of this video because I'd love to hear possibilities why uh, product manufacturing fell by a large amount. Now on to the monthly quarterly reports that Buddy Technologies is issuing. I'm not sure the reasons why ASX would require a companies to do this. I know a few companies do have to report on a monthly basis, but let's have a look at the numbers for Buddy and we can see what the cash flow is now like on a monthly rolling basis. For the July month receipts and customers, $2.5 million dollars. And they were operational cash flow negative by 261000 More importantly, they did do a capital raising. And in the July month, the capital raising of $6.5 million was added to their cash on hand. And that's the reason why their cash grew from $2.1 million to $5.9 million. And they were able to repay $2.1 million of loans in the month. Now let's have a look at the August monthly uh, report that was issued on the 1st of October, uh, over one hour ago for me, you know, just doing this video, and we can see how things have progressed for Buddy Technologies in the past month. Well, things have not performed as well, it seems. Receipts and customers is down to 2.1 million. Product manufacturing and operating costs actually have increased 
And because receipts are down, product manufacturing is up. That means uh, Buddy Technologies is operational cash flow negative for the month by $1.2 million. So not the best news for Buddy Technologies. Not only that, they did also repay $2.2 million of loans. So overall, about $3.5 million in cash were lost to the company. And that means uh, the cash on hand fell from 5.9 million to 2.2 million. So there is a potential in the future because they're still burning cash in the operations. They might have to do another cap raising. I just don't know. Debt is down to $24 million. And that actually is a good thing because the interest rates this company is paying on their, on their loans is quite high. And I'll talk about that in a future slide. In fact, that future slide is right here. This is the interest rates they are paying on their loans. There's quite a few loans here. There is one interest rate, $3 million at 12%, plus a 5% uh, rate on late payments, plus 2.4 million at 15%. Three loans at 12.5% and two loans at 10%. Again, even though we are in a low interest rate environment, there are some companies, particularly small cap companies with a high risk attached to them that are paying really high interest rates on their loans. And this is one of the reasons I don't like companies like Bunny Technologies being in too much debt because the interest rates they do have to pay are quite high. As we saw in the financial year 21, they pay $7 million just in interest rate um, payments. If we look at the receipts history for Buddy going back to the March quarter 2016, not a lot was happening between 2016 and 2019. Receipts were quite low. And then all of a sudden, receipts grew. More than likely, that was an acquisition. Again, if you know a little bit more about Buddy Technologies, uh, leave a comment why all of a sudden uh, receipts grew in the June quarter 2019. More than likely, again, it was an acquisition because from that June quarter 2019, receipts have been going sideways. We haven't seen an increase in receipts. I would have preferred receipts going up with time uh, from that June quarter 2019, but again, we don't have that. So not too excited when it comes to receipts history for Buddy Technologies. Now on to the chart for Buddy Technologies. This would be the weekly chart going back to early 2015. At times over the last six years, there has been a little bit of hype in this company, particularly in 2017, towards the end of that year, we did see the share price of Buddy Technologies rise from four cents to a top of 40 cents in one year. So there was a lot of hype during that period. It was a 10 bagger potentially for some shareholders. But from that high of 40 cents in towards the end of 2017, we have seen the share price under significant pressure. In fact, the share price for, fell from that high of 40 cents to a low of about one cent at the start of 2020. Again, we saw a bit of recovery uh, during 2020, just after the COVID-19 financial panic, but a lot of companies saw that sort of recovery in their share price. But ever since uh, that recovery, where we did see the share price get to a high of 10 cents for a brief period, uh, about one year ago from today, we again, we have seen a share price under pressure and the share price has fallen from 10 cents to a current share price of 1.9 cents. No reason to get excited about Buddy Technologies, when you look at the chart here, the most recent capital raising was for, uh, I think it was done at 2.5 cents and the share price has fallen through that. That's not a good sign in my opinion. Uh, the main reason I don't or am not too excited about party technologies apart from the chart here is simply this company burns through a lot of cash and with only $2 million on cash right on hand right now, there is a potential they might have to do another capital raising uh, fairly soon. So uh, particularly because they're burning cash in the last month, $1.2 million of cash. So uh, that's one negative thing about Buddy Technologies among uh, quite a few negative things about this company. That is all I have for this financial year 21 results and June quarter Penix 4C and July and August monthly quarter reports. If you do have any questions about Buddy Technologies, I'd love to hear your opinions, your thoughts, particularly from those shareholders who have been shareholders for a long time on this company. Are you still excited about the future of Buddy Technologies or are you feeling a bit down? I'd love to hear your thoughts about this company. I haven't done much research on Buddy, but their LifeX uh, consumer business side, uh, I do think is promising. And I do like that, that sort of um, smart 
igniting technology. So hopefully that side of the business can succeed in the long term. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's all for this video. Have a good day. Bye.